Hey everybody, welcome back to Barbecue by Biggs. I'm Aaron, and today we're doing a little maintenance on our equipment. We have our RV works fryer. We're gonna get that oil changed. Come along with us, stay tuned. So we've had our RV Works Cajun Fryer in service for about 14 months and have never changed the oil. As we've said in our previous reviews, the way this fryer is set up, it allows all the crumbles and all the burnt stuff to fall to the bottom, and that bottom oil keeps at a different temperature than that top oil, and it keeps that oil from burning up. So we've noticed in the last couple of fries that the oil is getting a little darker, as you can see here, so it's time to change. So we're going to take you through that process and bring you guys along with us. Let's do it. All right, if you're doing this on good sidewalk like I am now, I would suggest that you get something to put underneath the area that you're gonna work on. I'm just gonna use some, some cardboard here to get underneath it. Just in case you spill some oil, you're gonna have a lot of drainage all over a good piece of driveway. It's hard to get up, so I'd do that first. So the next step is to heat it up. You want that oil to be a little bit hotter so it can flow out a little bit better, but not too hot where it'll damage whatever container it is that you're using to put in it. We saved the container, and I would suggest that you guys do that. We saved the container from our, when we filled it the first time. It's been in the garage. We're just gonna fill that back up and take it for recycle. So we're gonna take it to probably about 120 degrees or so, not too hot so it won't melt the container, but hot enough so it'll flow out better. So we'll get it lit up, get it ready. So while this thing is warming up, we're just gonna take it and get all the little crusties off of here that may have dried on. That way we can get them into that oil to drain. Any crusties on your, that have dried on the inside, we're gonna get those cleaned off. Just get you a little bit of that oil, that warm oil up there and it comes right off. So if you got anything on that bar, get that off. You got that oil, the oil came up to, we're sitting at about 100, right about 150 degrees. So we're gonna let it cool down just a little bit while we're doing this. You wanna get all those crusties, any of that old dried oil out of there. And at the same time, you're getting oil up on the sides to protect it. So if you don't get every crumb out, it's not that big of a deal. All right, we'll let it cool down to about the 125, 130 range, and then we'll start to drain it. Are you guys right back? So as you can see on the back of this RV works, it has a gate valve right here that you can open up and allow that oil to come out. What we have done is got a little nipple with a piece of, of three quarter inch nylon tubing. That way we can screw it into, into this fitting and make it a lot easier to get into our container. If you have a a larger container with a large mouth, you can just stick it underneath there, open it up, and it'll run out. We're gonna put it back into the original container, so this makes it a little bit easier. Again, it's just a nipple with a piece of hose on the end of it. Screw it in to that fitting, and then when you open that gate valve, all that oil will run out of this tube into whatever container that you're using. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's do it. All right, so once you get that oil to the heat that you want it at, I would suggest you're putting on a high heat glove just in case you get some splashback. You're gonna open up that gate and that oil's gonna come running out. So we'll do that now. As you can tell, that oil is, is dark. It was ready to be changed. But you know what, 14 months, not bad. And like we said at the beginning, that oil was only about $20 when we purchased the first time. Second time, $40. So, you know, the savings really do add up, especially in today's time. So we'll get this drained out and we'll show you what guys what the inside looks like. Bring you right back. As you can see, it has this wing nut. Usually this is heavy enough to hold it onto the cart. So all this does is keep it stable. So we're gonna take that wing nut up and then we're gonna dump the rest of that crud out of this thing and then get her filled back up. So I got it laying on its side and you can see all this crud and this goo. That last bit of goo that we gotta get out of there. Now again, you could use hot water. I've said it before, I don't like to do that, but you're more than welcome to do that. We'll just get this stuff scraped out, cleaned out. All right, so we put it back on, and we're just gonna pour a little bit more oil in 
get those last little bit out, and we'll be done. As you can see, it's running out clear, so we're good to go. All right, we'll bring back, fill it up. All right, so we got all this crud out of here. It took a little bit more time than I thought it was gonna take. You might wanna leave yourself just a little bit of time. Don't let the video fool you. We're gonna edit a little bit of that out of here. But it had a lot of stuff on the bottom that I had to dig out and uh, flip this thing upside down to get it out. Now, I don't even think putting hot water in there would have cleared it because it would have plugged up that gate valve and you would have been constantly trying to get that gate valve cleared. So taking that wing nut off, dump it over on its side and just scraping that stuff out was the best idea for me. Now at this point, you could, again, use that hot water. I'm not going to. There's just some little crumbs every now and again, so we're good. So we're gonna fill this thing back up. I would suggest you get your, you get your basket as a gauge. What you wanna do is make sure that you stop that about right about here, because when that, when that oil starts to, to bubble and starts to roll and boil, what happens is it starts to rise and it comes up above your basket. And what you don't want is your stuff that you're supposed to have in your basket frying coming out above it. So we're gonna fill it up probably about right there or so and uh, go from there. Again, I, I guess I misspoke earlier, those, those tubs from Sam's Club is where I got those. I said five gallons, but it's actually a 35 pound bucket of it, which equals four and a half gallons. This is an RV Works four gallon fryer. So we have plenty of oil to fill it up. If you see that oil that I used to clear it, that was some of the oil that was left over from last time I filled this up. So you guys, we're gonna fill this up and uh, show you what we did. And again, if you missed it, I got this from Sam's Club. I'll show you the box. It's just clear, pure clear frying oil. And again, it didn't go rancid sitting outside. So it's a good choice. You can use whatever you want, but I know that the other oils are a lot more expensive than this one was. And again, this one came up, it was about $40 this time instead of, I think, $19.97 the first time that we did it. That should get it. We'll leave the rest of it in there. It probably short us. Doesn't feel like a half gallon left, but there is some left in there. I'll bring you in close, let you see how full it is. As you can see, like we said, about that first cage down, that's where we're gonna have it. See how much clearer that is than that stuff we took out? Oh yeah, can't wait to use this again. All right, last thing we're gonna do before we put this away was we're gonna bring it up to temperature. We're gonna bring it up to about 350 degrees. Let it sit there at 350 degrees for a few minutes to kill anything that we might've gotten in there or any of that stuff that might be on the top. Let it fall to the bottom for clean out next time. So we'll bring it up to temperature now and we'll bring you guys back for our final thoughts. So we got it up to temp, everything looks fine. Couple of lessons learned. Leave yourself about 30 to 45 minutes to do this. If you change your oil often or take it out and strain it and drain it and put it back in, it'll make this a little bit easier. Like I said before, we left it 14 months. We had a lot of stuff in the bottom. Took a little while to get that scraped out. The thing I learned, probably after about six months, I'm gonna drain it, strain it, and put it right back in there. One of the things that I like about this, this fryer is that I can just stick it in my garage in the back and not have to worry about it. Don't have to worry about it going rancid because of the way it's designed. So the best thing about this, we got clear oil to do some cooking. So if you guys wanna see some more cooks, make sure you hit that subscribe button at the bottom and we'll see you guys on the next cook.